Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is Professor Young, and this is our initial introductory look into uh, muscle physiology. Uh, we'll be handling muscle uh, anatomy, or at least uh, naming the specific muscles during our lab time. Uh, but for right now, uh, in the lecture, what we will be focusing on is the physiology. Um, little of the muscular system. And so with that said, uh, why don't we jump right into this and get ourselves moving. So a couple things that we already know uh, or should know about muscles is that the main intermediate filament type that is associated with, uh, with muscle, mu muscle tissue of all kinds, is desmin. Um, we know that each tissue type uh, has its own specific type of intermediate filament that is associated with it uh, that make up the cytoskeleton. And again, desmin is uh, the choice for muscle. Uh, within that, we also can identify three specific types of muscle. Uh, we went over these three types uh, to some degree in our discussion on tissues. So we know we have skeletal, which is voluntary, multinucleated, uh, and have very long muscle fibers. We have smooth muscle, which is uninucleated, um, almost like a, a blunt or doobie shape, uh, what we call fusiform. And we know that that is involuntary. And we also have cardiac muscle, uh, which, like skeletal muscle, is striated, uh, but also, like smooth muscle, is involuntary and has a very branched type of appearance to it. <laughs> and it is also involuntary, if I didn't say that. Now that we have that kind of stuff, then we can kind of really get in here and focus our attention on skeletal muscle. Uh, towards the end of this um, uh, series of Wimbas, uh, we'll get into smooth muscle a little bit and we'll save uh, cardiac tissue for AMP2 when we get into the circulatory system. But the bulk of what we are discussing in this look at muscle is going to be centered around and focused on skeletal muscle. And one of the things that we see when we talk about skeletal muscle specifically um, with smooth muscle and cardiac muscle, uh, some of this terminology does switch up a little bit um, or the structure is just not there altogether. Um, and so this, I can't stress enough, is specifically dealing with skeletal muscle. Um, but we do see some terminology that is unique to this. Uh, for instance, Muscle cells are referred to as myofibers. Uh, and again, um, it's not a myocyte uh, because it's not just one individually, individual cell with one individual nucleus. It is a very elongated cell with multiple nuclei along the length of that fiber. And so therefore we refer to this as a myofiber. Uh, indeed, when we get into smooth muscle, you will see that term myocyte uh, come into play. But for skeletal muscles uh, specifically is what we refer to as a myofiber. Likewise, uh, the membrane of a skeletal muscle cell has its own unique term, and that is what we refer to as a sarcolemma, a sarcolemma. Cytoplasm has its own unique terminology, uh, that being the sarcoplasm. The endoplasmic reticulum, which we know is in a normal cell used for transportation, whether it's a rough endoplasmic reticulum and involved in the transportation of proteins, or whether it's the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is involved in the production and transportation of fat. In skeletal muscle, the endoplasmic reticulum 
again uh, has its own nomenclature that is a that is associated with it, uh, but it is referred to as the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it is actually involved in the transportation of an action potential. Uh, and this is a term that you need to become familiar with as we will be spending a lot of time uh, talking about action potentials and different ways in which they are generated uh, and what the generation and sustaining of them uh, really mean for our ability to move and function and think and react and respond. Um, an action potential is simply a um, wave of electrical impulse. It's a wave of electrical impulse, and we're going to define that uh, in a couple different means and a couple different couple different ways uh, as we go through this. But that sarcoplasmic reticulum um, is going to be critical for delivering that electrical message or that electrical stimulus to a particular structure that we come to fondly known as the terminal cisterns. Uh, and this is, an end, this is a specialized end of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, that is involved in the storage of calcium. Uh, now, this calcium is stored here as a reserve for muscle contraction. And as we will learn in lecture, uh, in, in, a, in, in the next lecture, I should say, uh, calcium, if calcium is not present, muscle contraction does not happen. And so there is a very critical link uh, between having enough calcium present and the ability for a muscle to contract. And so this slide here just kind of points out a little bit more of the uh, anatomy, if you would, or the structure of a muscle cell. And so we see the bigger picture here, uh, which is what we refer to as the uh, fascicle right there. Uh, and that fascicle, is, you know, if you take your turkey and shred it, and you get those long, almost like split ends that start to appear, those long fibers, that's a fascicle. And inside of that fascicle, it's actually contained muscle fibers. Uh, and you can see that the muscle fiber, uh, which is identified right here, uh, is again, running the entire length of uh, the muscle, and it is multi-nucleated. Those dark blue spots that you're looking at right there and right there and the one that's indicated right there are nuclei that are running the entire length of that muscle fiber. Notice that surrounding um, all of that bundle of uh, what we would come to know as myofibrils right there, right? So inside of that bundle of myofibrils uh, and the nuclei that are running down it, you see that we have the sarcolemma, that cell membrane. And so inside of the muscle fiber, there are even smaller units of fiber that we refer to as the myofibrils. And it is inside of the myofibrils that we yet find even smaller fibers, what we call myofilaments what we refer to as myofilament. Uh, and we will find out uh, in the next Wimba session that there's actually two types of myofilament. You have thick filament and thin filament. And so again, these here are called myofilament. So if we look at the big picture here, um, for the overall structure of muscle. Um, you've got the fascicle, uh, which is a co large collection of muscle fibers, and the muscle fiber is composed of multiple nuclei uh, 
the sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane. And then inside the fiber, there are multiple smaller fibers that we refer to as myofibrils. And then inside of those myofibrils, there's even smaller strands of fiber that we refer to as myofilaments. Remember we were talking about the fact that skeletal muscle is striated, uh, meaning that you have lines that you can see running down the muscle fiber itself. Those striations are caused or created by the myofilament. Uh, and again, we will learn that there are indeed two types of myofilament. We have thick and thin myofilament. And so there's another level of complexity here that we still need to consider. Let us consider specifically the role of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, um, because this is the hub. This is where it all happens. Uh, and if we don't have this down, um, you're going to be lost going, uh, going forward. The sarcoplasmic reticulum, as I mentioned previously, has the, the dubious um, role of storing calcium. That is the job of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It does that within the terminal cistern. Now, part of its reserve comes from the sarcoplasm. And so it has the ability to pump calcium from the sarcoplasm into that terminal cistern or the end cap on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And, of course, it would do that using calcium pumps, um, which we, 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 uh, we uh, define, if you would, or name, identify as being calcium ATP aces. All right. In order for the terminal cistern to release the calcium, in order for the terminal cistern, to release the calcium, an action potential must be triggered. Now, again, an action potential is this wave of electrical impulse. And we're going to define that a little bit more clearly um, within the coming Wimba sessions or, or lectures. But for now, it's, an, it's a wave of electrical impulse. When the voltage-gated calcium channels that are found on the sarcolemma become triggered, what are they triggered by? They're triggered by voltage right there. And so these are calcium channels that open based on a change in the voltage or an electrical impulse that acts on that channel. Right. Ironically, what's causing those voltage-gated channels to open? An action potential. What's an action potential? A wave of electrical impulse. When that action potential hits those voltage-gated calcium channels, it opens those channels and releases the calcium back into the sarcoplasma. From there, the calcium is allowed to go ahead and cause muscle contraction. When the action potential is done, the channels close and the calcium ATP aces, the calcium pumps, open back up, sucking the calcium out of the sarcoplasm back into the terminal cisterns where they're going to be stored. That's the first piece that I need you to understand. Right? That's the hub. Now, there's a bunch of stuff that happened before the, uh, the uh, terminal cisterns are, are involved. There's a bunch of stuff that happens after the terminal cisterns are involved. But this is our first step in trying to understand 
muscle contraction. What does this look like? Well, here is a picture. Um, and uh, if you download the actual PowerPoint, it is a moving picture. Um, it is an animation. We lose that effect here uh, using, using uh, uh, the Wimba system, but that's okay. Let me point out to you the key players that are involved here. Just so you can kind of get an idea. There and there is the sarcolemma. Right? So this is the cell membrane. There are invaginations or uh, dip downs, if you would, into the membranes of the sarcolemma. That is what we refer to as being the T-tubules right there. So the T-tubules are an extension of the sarcolemma. On either side of the T-tubule, you have your sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is right here. And so specifically what we're dealing with are the terminal cisterns of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That there, this here, that there, and this here. Those guys are the voltage-gated calcium channels. Right, so the action potential is going to travel down the sarcolemma into the T-tubule, and it's going to force those voltage-gated calcium channels to open, which is going to release calcium down into this area here, which is the sarcoplasm. So the calcium is going to be released through the voltage-gated channels down into the sarcoplasm. When the action potential has passed, these calcium channels will close and the calcium pumps will open. There's your calcium pumps. They open. And when they open, they take that calcium that was once down here in um, the sarcoplasm and they suck any extra calcium back up into the uh, terminal cisterns. All right. Now, again, there's a bunch of stuff that happens before this whole step. There's a bunch of stuff that happens after all the, uh, this whole step. And that's where we need to start filling in. This is really a story where we start in the middle and we go to the end and then we come back and we fill in the beginning. Uh, and I think once we fill in the beginning, this will all make perfect sense. All right, and so again, this here is simply um, a step-by-step -step of what the sarcoplasmic reticulum does. And so in this picture here, uh, there is no action potential in A. The uh, uh, voltage-gated um, calcium channels are closed, and the calcium pumps are closed. Everything is stabilized. In B, notice that there is an action potential now that is traveling down the sarcolemma, down into the T-tubule. All right. Once it reaches the channels, once it reaches the voltage-gated channels right there, notice that they open. And so in C, the action potential has reached those voltage-gated channels a change in the voltage, 
is going to force those calcium channels to open, which is going to release the calcium. There's our little calcium guys there that have all been released. All right, notice that the channels are still open. The action potential is still passing through. In E, no more action potential. Channels are closed. Channels are closed. And in F, what we see is that the right there, right there, and right there, we see that the um, uh, calcium pumps are now going to be sucking the calcium back up into the terminal cisterns. Once that calcium is pumped back in, the pumps close, and we wait for another action potential to come by. And that's it. That's the end. All right? That's all she wrote. Um, and so if, as long as you can get this portion of the process down, I think you will be in good shape uh, for what will follow. Um, so on that note, uh, keep reviewing this process. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know.